In this video I'm going to show you how to program an ATmega 328P microchip using the header off of a Raspberry Pi. This chip here is the same chip found inside of an Arduino Uno. What you're going to need to be able to accomplish this is of course a Raspberry Pi and a way to connect to it. I'm using a headless connection here. I'm bringing the Pi to the breadboard using a cobbler here. This is optional. You could go directly off of the header. You're going to need the chip itself. You're going to need uh, some cables to be able to wire everything up and zooming in a bit here. We're going to need the AT Mega chip. We're going to need an LED. We're going to use a blink function as a demonstration. We're going to need a 10,000 ohm resistor to serve as a pull up resistor and another resistor that will prevent us from shorting out the LED. I'm using a thousand ohm here because that's what I happen to have. And then we're going to need a 16 megahertz uh, oscillator or a clock to drive this chip here. So let's get started in wiring this up. Pin 1 on the AT Mega is connected to the 10 kilo ohm resistor connected to the 3.3 volt on the Raspberry Pi. This is how it serves as a pull up resistor. That same pin 1 on the AT Mega is connected to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO 8 or CE0 depending on your notation. The AT Mega's VCC, or pin 7, is connected to the Pi's 3.3 volts. Ground on the AT Mega, or pin 8, is connected to the Pi's ground. VCC on the AT Mega, pin 7, is also connected to pin 20, which is the AVCC. Pin 9 on the AT Mega is the first crystal pin, which will be connected to the crystal and then connected to pin 10. We're going to wire our LED up to the equivalent of digital 8 on the Arduino, that is pin 14 on the AT Mega. This LED will then be connected to our other resistor and then to ground on the AT Mega. Finally, we're going to have to connect the communication lines to enable SPI communication between the Raspberry Pi and the AT Mega. Pin 19 is the SCK line on the AT Mega, and that is connected to SCLK on the Raspberry Pi. Pin 18 is MISO on the AT Mega and that is connected to the Pi's MISO. And finally pin 17 is the MOSI which will be connected to the Pi's MOSI. Alright, let's get started in wiring this up. On your Raspberry Pi, open up an instance of the terminal. You can do this either headlessly or directly on the Pi itself. Once open, type in sudo raspi-config and navigate down to the advanced options and go to SPI and yes, you want to enable it and you want to keep the SPI kernel module loaded by default. So hit yes, OK, and then go to finish. Once that's done, we're going to have to update our Pi. So type in sudo apt-get update. This could take a moment. Now that that is done, we're going to have to install some new packages. Type in sudo app-get install arduino space arduino-mk. This will be installing two packages, and yes, we want to have them installed. This again will take a moment. I already have these packages installed, so it didn't take very long. Right now we are in our home directory. Let's navigate towards our desktop and let's create a new folder called ATmega. Navigate into that ATmega folder. This should be empty. Now we're going to download a package that allows us to communicate to our ATmega chip using the GPIO header on the Pi. So type in wget colon slash slash project dash downloads dot drogon dot net slash gert board slash avr dude underscore five point ten dash four underscore arm hf dot deb this will download a package called avr dude yada 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 type in sudo dpkg dash i avr dude and the rest of the extension this will take a moment once that's done, type in sudo chmod4755 slash usr slash bin slash avr dude. Okay, so at this point we should be able to talk to our AT Mega chip. Before we go ahead programming, let's make sure our connection is good. Type in avr dude p 
M328P, which is the model of the chip, and C-C GPIO. This will test whether or not we're okay. And here we see we have a device signature, fuse is okay, reading da 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 da, everything is okay. This means that our setup is good. If you do not see this screen, that means there is something wrong with your wiring between the Raspberry Pi and the AT Mega, and you need to revisit your connections. So now that we have that set up, we can remove this package that we have installed just for nice housekeeping. So now our folder is empty, and we're going to want to program our AT Mega chip. So I'm going to write a simple blink.ino script file that will just blink that LED. So first we're going to in create an integer that is our LED. Since we're connected to the equivalent of digital, nine, uh, digital 8, uh, we're going to be initializing LED to be digital 8, then void setup. And here all that we're going to do is we're going to set the pin mode of our LED to be an output and then we're going to create our loop and in the loop we're going to digital write our LED to be high and then we are going to delay for one second and then we are going to digital write our LED to be low and then we're going to delay for another second there we go and that should be it Let's close this file and save it. So now we have this file here. Now the thing is, is this file is not directly uploaded to the Raspberry Pi. Instead, we need to compile it. We need to compile it into a language that the AT Mega is going to understand, and then we can upload that. So the way we go about doing that is we're going to create a make file. So type in nano capital M make file, no extension. And here we're going to specify a few parameters for our compilation. So Arduino underscore dir is equal to usr slash share slash Arduino, all lowercase. Board underscore tag is equal to uno because we're using the same chip as in the uno. Arduino underscore port. So this is how are we going to be communicating to it. And it's going to be dev slash tty ama zero. Next line is arduino underscore libs is equal to blank so leave that one blank and then finally include usr slash share slash arduino slash capital a arduino dot mk we're going to want to save and exit out of this so now we have our make file and our blink dot ino just type in make so now we have compiled our files, and if we build, uh, take a look at our directory here, we see a folder there called build uno. Let's navigate into that folder. And here, let's just clear the screen a little bit here. Taking a look at this folder, what you see is these uh, the AT Mega hex file. And so this is named AT Mega because we happen to be in the folder AT Mega. So keep in mind that if you don't call that folder that you happen to compile from AT Mega, this name here could change. Let's get back, go back a folder, back to our AT Mega. So now we have our blink.ino script, the build of it, and our make file, which will stay here. Now we just need to upload this to our AT Mega. And you do that by typing in avrdude-pm328p, so this is the chipset type, and we're going to be connecting over our GPIO, and that uh, dash e dash u, space flash, colon w, colon build underscore uno or build dash uno I should say slash 18 mega three uh, 18 mega dot hex so again we're calling this 18 mega dot hex build uno because in our build uno folder we have our 18 mega uh, 18 mega dot hex file just hit enter and boom uploaded and here we can see our LED has started to blink cool eh so if we wanted to change that file you would just go nano blink.ino, you would modify your script however you wanted here. Let's say we want to have it off for only uh, half a second and we want it to be on for two seconds. So we're going to modify our program here. You say yes, okay. Again, you need to make it and then you need to upload it using the AVR dude command. And now we have a different blinking pattern on our LED. 
And that's all there is to it, to programming your very own 8T Mega 328P chip. Now a special note I'd like to include here is we are still connected through SPI to our Raspberry Pi. This is not necessary for the chip to run. I could rip out these cables right now. And we don't need the reset line anymore. And our AT Mega works just fine. The only thing you need to continue to have are the wiring for the power supply, the clock, and the LED. As well, if you wish, you can remove the 3.3 volt line and increase your voltage, say to 5 volts off of the Pi header, or use an external power supply altogether. The chip is programmed and it's ready to rock. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have yourself a good one.